welcome to uh, the Demi Ramos Show presented by Pop Dust. I am so excited today because we're going to talk to Zolita and she is a multifaceted artist. Um, so we're going to find out about her journey from top to bottom. And how are you doing today? And what are you wearing? She looks amazing. I am doing so great. I'm just wearing a suit, you know? I was like, it's feeling like a suit kind of day. This is Mugler. It's my favorite. My favorite designer in the oh, world. Sh- oh. Are you into fashion? Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. so Mul- Mulgers? Mugler. Mugler. Terry Mugler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. No, my, my favorite designer like, of all time. Do you enjoy yeah. um, the whole process of like getting up and getting ready? Definitely. Definitely. But I feel like there's phases in my life where I'm... Like, I put much more time and effort into the way I'm presenting myself. And I feel like maybe right now I'm not as much in that space. But um, I think living in New York, I probably was more in that space. Because people, like, actually genuinely care about, you know, how they present themselves. But here in L.A., it really <laughs> Like, no one really puts very much effort in. That's true. And you're from Calabasas. Yeah, right? I'm from you're Calabasas. from California. Mm-hmm. Cali girl. Yes. Um, I want to start from, like, when you were a little girl and, like, yeah. you discovered your talent. Um, so yeah, tell us about what were you doing at nine years old? When did you discover your passion? At nine years old. Um, so I actually, singing didn't really come, come into my life until later. Like I always liked to sing, but I didn't think I was particularly good. At, but I, um, what? I know, but I wasn't, I feel like I'm, I have trained myself to be better, but, um, naturally I was better at guitar. So I started playing acoustic guitar and it was bluegrass, which is so different than what I'm doing now, obviously. But, um, so I started playing acoustic guitar and and then also just like loved directing from a really young age mm-hmm. so at that part at that point in my life it was like directing all of my friends and like making plays and like putting on plays and shows for the parents and stuff like that and then like you know stealing my parents video camera and and like shooting little movies with my friends and stuff so yeah so when I was nine I was definitely doing that but I was also playing guitar and then um and then eventually started writing just for myself you know, I think the first song I wrote. Yeah, tell us about that first song. Oh my God, I was I was seven. Is it about your crush? <laughs> I was seven years old. No, it wasn't even about a crush. It was my parents were trying to make me eat broccoli, and I really didn't want to. And they sent me to my room, <laughs> and I wrote a song. And it literally, I can remember. It's like it was like sometimes it is easy, sometimes it is hard in life. Oh yeah, like so melodramatic. Seven years old, did not want to eat broccoli. <laughs> okay, so going back to Cali Girl. Is it true? There's so many stigmas about New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. Um, just people from anywhere. Is it? Yeah. What stigmas are true about like natives to Cali um, versus like what's false? Maybe from a real native Cali native girl. To, okay, let me think. Um, I think especially in LA and in the industry, like the idea that people are are fake or that people are social climbing or like are using you. That is kind of true in a lot of a lot of. Um, places in LA. I think you can absolutely find, you know, really incredible people. And I have an amazing friend group around me, but like, if you're trying to find those people really like thick in the industry or especially like in the influencer space, like you're not going to, like everybody's is like, when you meet somebody, it's kind of like, people are like, what can I get out of you? It's, oh it's kind of like yeah, an unspoken agreement almost. That that. And it's, that's crazy. Yeah. So I kind of stay away from that scene. It's so not New York too. Cause you've lived in New York for six years. Yeah. It's, which is so different. Like so New York is Nobody just gives so a F like who anyone is no, at the party. Everyone talks to each so other. It's, it's yeah, no, it's, I miss that about New York a lot. And also if, if somebody's trying to get something out of the other person, they're very upfront and blunt about it. It's not like this sneaky, like, oh, so like, work? like let me befriend you and then like use you. And like, but, um, I live on the East side in Echo Park, and so I feel like I'm a little bit away from that that scene, which is nice. Oh man, yeah. And what do you think about like influencer culture in general too? Because that's like a, it's kind of like a new thing in the past five years. Yeah, where artists but it's have kind of to be dying a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's just my. I'm like I hope it's dying. But it's like not trending anymore. To be yeah, bad. yeah. But it's it's. I guess it's just ever changing, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, no artists. That is. I feel like 95 percent of a pop artist's job right now is social mm. media and is like being your own marketing machine. I also wanted to really get into, um, you know, sexuality kind of talk because I yeah, mean, yeah. I think it's so dope that you're so, that you represent kind of for people, you represent your community and shit like that. So when did you discover about yourself, you know, your sexuality? Because I, you know, I heard on a, I read an article that you were kind of maybe like a little hesitant to tell your girlfriends and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. What kind of Definitely. advice do you have for people that want to come out and be yeah. who they are? 
I, so I didn't realize until pretty late, I would say, I feel like I hear so many narratives and stories that are, of people that are like, oh my God, I knew since I was like six mm -hmm. or whatever. I genuinely, like, I think I was 16 when I started thinking that I, that I was gay. And um, I think it was because I genuinely didn't have very much representation. Like, wow. I literally, I knew Ellen was gay and that was it. Like, mm -hmm. there was just wasn't very many, like, there weren't like lesbian characters That's on true. TV and stuff. That's so and true. there weren't any like lesbian artists that I knew of that, you know, there obviously were, but not like in the mainstream media. And, um, but then when I saw Glee, that's when, what like set off, you know, the bells in my head. And I was like, oh, like, okay, that makes sense. That's like what I want. And that was like my big awakening. And then when that happened, I just like, I knew, I knew coming out in high school didn't make sense. Cause at that point it was still, even though I was in California, like there was maybe one out gay girl and one out gay guy in a school of 2000 people. And it was like, not, it still was like lesbian was a slur, you yeah. know? And obviously that's changed so much um, at my high school, my old high school. But yeah, so I got into NYU and I was like, I know that everybody in New York is going to be gay pretty much. And Let's I'm going to just wait. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to wait till I get there to come out because it's not even going to be a thing when I go there. And so, yeah, but, but advice, I would say, um, I think I've always said like, take take your time. I think people are so quick to be like, oh my God, wait, I don't know. Could I be bi? Am I a lesbian? Am I this? Like, don't, you don't have to feel like I have to like rush to label myself. And you have to tell anybody actually. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. Like take your time with it. And also like, I love, I know I love the word queer as an umbrella term. If you're not feeling like you want to completely, you know, like choose a label, that's such a nice umbrella label. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like, if you're not in a place that's, that you feel like safe to come out or you feel ready like even identifying just one friend in your life or one even if it's an internet friend like somebody that you feel like you can open up to like that is everything it like relieves so much of the the feeling of like not being able to share yourself and I, I remember in high school like there was one girl um who I was friends with that I that I told before everybody else and so she knew for a year before anybody else did and and I got so close to her because of that because I was wow. like oh you know all of me mm -hmm. you know so I think just like even finding one person is is really important you're also like you're also I would say I mean feminist yeah you're, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah on feminism absolutely. and like a girl's girl yeah and I think that's so dope and I feel like not enough women talk about that yeah yeah but you do and um what does that term mean to you Oh my gosh, feminism. It's so funny to even talk about it now in 20, I mean, I guess it's still just as important as it was in mm -hmm. <laughs> when Trump took office in uh, 2016. You even released a song in protest. Fight like a girl, yeah. Yes, fight like a girl. Yes, yes. Um, in protest of the election of like yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My which body, is so my ballsy, man. Yeah. So ballsy. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, feminism is always to me just like having equal opportunity and, and mm -hmm. you know, equal opportunity, equal pay. Um, just equality across across everything. Respect. Yeah. It's, it's, I think more than anything too. Yeah. It's, it's like a respect thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool beans. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so NYU. Yes. Moved to New York. Yes. Was it a shock to you? Because I mean, you're in LA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because sometimes you get shocked. People, you know, come yeah, to yeah, LA yeah. Like, whoa. Okay, it wasn't. I think maybe because I was literally two years old when I moved, but I was born in New York. Awesome. And I spent my first few years of my life on Bleecker Street right by NYU and I feel like it's in my body kind of mm -hmm. and um I, th I don't know I just always I felt like so called to New York even though I only went there once when I was like 16 I think before I moved there and um but I love yeah I love New York so much and it genuinely was like such a perfect place for me to be in you know my my late teens early 20s and like when I was really like figuring out who I was as an artist and my identity and like just like having an incredible circle of like queer artist friends around me um, and just like the spontaneity of New York and the like creative inspiration and just like obviously feeling like a main character every year, you know, you're walking down the street on your, with your headphones on, every single person is like feeling like a main mm -hmm. character. It's like, mm -hmm. there's so much just like agency being there. It's, yeah, I, it wasn't really, yeah, I didn't feel like that much of a shock to me. I just loved it so much and I, um, but I always loved having LA too to come back to. And I loved like the contrast of the two places. Like there's such a polarity between them. I know, I feel like bicoastal is like the way to go. Oh my God, it's so, it's so funny because no, it's I mean, so different, but the people, there's like a similarity, I guess, in the people. Mm -hmm. 
but they're yeah such different places but i love them both yeah now the making of explosion yeah that yeah, was, yeah that was a viral that went viral on the video yeah right yeah, yeah that, was so well. that was my first that was like my first video that you know maybe want to do do what i'm doing i want to yeah. know about the moment like br like literally bring us back to you were writing it like by yourself like when what was the yeah. situation yeah so oh my god this was like sophomore year of college and i was um just like writing on you know just writing for myself and i had fallen in love with my best friend and <gasps> at that oh point god. yeah i was like i didn't think that I don't know if I like knew that that was such a universal queer experience in the moment that I wrote it, but then I, yeah, so I wrote the song and I was randomly working for a magazine called Galore at the time. Oh yes. And yeah. And, um, and so I performed at their fashion week party and then this producer came up to me and that was, um, the first producer that I ever worked with and he produced my first EP and, and, uh, and yeah. And so explosion, that was the first time. I remember when I made that video, I was like, oh, this is, cause I had like explored different aesthetics and stuff before that. But that was really the first time where I was like, this feels like, this is Zolita. Like this is, you know, the kind of like art I want to be making. Wow. And when so. writing this song, sometimes I just, I love to ask this question, but did you know that that was the song oh, that no. was going to make a difference? No way. <laughs> I feel like you never really? know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard. That's so, it was so long ago too. Like. Can't and how far remember, like, is it from the maybe first draft or first demo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like not that f for explosion, like not that far from the first demo. I don't think. Yeah. yeah, because it was so like I feel like that song is so stripped down. But yeah, and I mean with that song too, it's like the follow up song, right? The follow up like mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. that was the EP. Oh yeah, Immaculate Conception. Yeah, tell yeah. us about the making of that first project. The making of the first project, it genuinely, I like kind of miss those days sometimes because it really just came from a place of like wanting to create and not ha having any awareness of how people were gonna receive it. Just like genuinely just doing it, you know, when you're like young, you're like just like so passionate and just like mm -hmm. wanting to make, to make something. And I still have that in me, but obviously there's a lot of, that's like conflated with also like knowing who my audience is and wanting to make stuff for them and and at that point i didn't have an audience so i was just making things because i wanted to make them which is such a special place i think to be in as an artist and um yeah so i think at that point i was just like writing writing a lot just on my guitar and then like bringing it to a producer and but sonically i didn't really have like the language that i do now to be able to like describe what i wanted um so i think that's why it, it sounds so different than the stuff that i'm making now because I was just like in such an exploratory phase. But yeah, that was a special. And obviously the holy music video, which is like, I feel like that's the music video that really like got, like that my, my original fan base is, is from. Um, and making that was so special too. How do you yeah. feel like you, like through the years, transformed as an artist? And how much do you yeah. like try to hold on to maybe the, the reason why you started? Yeah, oh my gosh. I guess, I think, at my core, I'm the same, which is like the music videos are always my bread and butter, and that's like what always excites me the most is yes, coming because up you with the direct. She directs, yes. by the way. Yeah, direct, produce, edit, write, all of them, and um, and then and star in them. So, <laughs> but yeah, so those have always been. I went to film school at NYU, and um, the music beautiful. videos are always just what has made me want to make music genu genuinely. Like I, I always say like the music is literally the medium for me to be able to make. The videos that I want to make, wow. and yeah, so I, a lot of the time, I'm like a too, film like, major. What? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Actually. Yeah, what? and a lot of the time, I'll think of video ideas before I even like make the song, or it just is always like it's the marriage of the two that's so important to me. I think prior, in like my, the beginning of my my artistry, I always thought like the dark story. I was really attracted to dark stories, and like, you know just like dark witchy imagery and really unhappy endings and that reminds me of something if anyone doesn't already know um i am sitting next to a real like life <laughs> witch yes you're a witch too i think we're all witches I w yeah well, here's the thing my best friend victoria she yeah. um she's also a witch oh cool awesome. and she has potions she makes potions yes, in the house yes, she has yes, all yes. of her um Things. Well, I just want to get into that because it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a big part of your artistry too. Is yeah. um, 
How would you even describe it? I, I actually read about this though. Yeah. So how would oh, you describe it? Be, being a witch? I just think yes. it just means tapping into your intuitive energy, you know? Really? Yeah. Is and then I think we means? all have it inside us and I think you don't even need all the tools, but um, but yeah, but it is fun and dramatic to be able to use the tools. I like, I swear I read an article on you and like witch and like your like witchcraft. Yeah. Do you know, like, is it, I'm fascinated by this by the way. Yeah. So is there like spells? How does it work? I think it's just like, it's so different for everybody. You can like definitely go and like read books about Wicca and like go. It's called Wicca? Yeah, I mean that's that's like the, the you know, the, the religion, but I feel like now yes. a lot of people who are like practicing witches kind of have strayed from that and are, are it's a more like modern, modernized version. And funny enough, this came up like this morning. Yeah. Um, basically, tell me if this is true or if you've heard of this, but I heard that witches came from pretty much um, back, back, back in the day. I'm not sure when exactly. Um, you know, women were hung and killed. Oh yeah, yeah and yeah. called witches for being outspoken, yeah. or not following like the norms of what a woman should be. And that's kind of is that yeah is that no absolutely like, wow. like Salem witch trials and yeah yeah yeah. Definitely. How did you connect to to being Wicca? a witch? Yeah, I think that I. So I grew up uh, atheist, like my dad was atheist, my mom was agnostic and with no sense, no like spirituality in my life at all. And I think that's what made me so drawn to it. And I, I was kind of a spiritual tourist for a little bit and was like trying all different kinds of religions just by way of like different friends I had and stuff. And then when I found Wicca, I was just like, oh, this is like the power is in you. It's not some like outside God that I have to like answer to, you know, it's like, the idea of Wicca wow. is like that there's power inside you and you create your own destiny. And you're like, you're working with like the magic of the universe, but it's the power is ultimately like you and you have agency. So, so it's very far from maybe what like Hollywood has portrayed uh -huh. which should be like hocus pocus when people mm. like, Oh my God, yeah. Of witches, they yeah. Hocus, so it's actually more- So different. Spiritual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is- Yeah. So but yeah, but, but going back to that question about like, just like things being dark, like I, like I feel like I needed dark, which I still love obviously like dark witchy imagery, but I feel like recently, so my last, the trilogy that I did, um, it's super like, it's, it has a super happy ending. The imagery is super lighthearted. It's like calls back to like high school rom-coms and, and I think I just realized, and that did so, so well. And I think I realized I'm like, just because something is like lighthearted and has a happy ending doesn't mean it's not like art it's still like true mm -hmm. art you know and i think i used to think it had to be like dark and unhappy to be like considered like art um so people i think that's like, the way I've, I've changed as an artist maybe people describe your your genre as dark pop as well yeah yeah is, yeah, that, yeah. Like, is that like on purpose i think not anymore i think my, i don't really think i make dark pop anymore i think it's, now it's just like pop like maybe a little bit of like like pop punk but yeah it's definitely shifted i don't think it's as dark pop that's dope. Yeah. You released a new track in September. Yes. And yes, the visual yes. for that is actually really dope. Check that out. Yeah. Like her visuals are crazy. Yeah, so you. tell us about that song and what um, we can expect next from you. Cause we're, yeah, you know, yeah. It's always a surprise. So, so yeah. So I have an EP coming out, which I'm super excited about. And um, so the first song was 20 questions and that came out in September. Mm -hmm. And so we shot four music videos uh, for this EP and they all connect again. So kind of like the trilogy, but even more, more videos in the trilogy. Um, and, and yeah, so the next video is coming out next week and it's called Ruin My Life. And then there's, there's two more after that. And the EP, I'm super excited about it. It's like, there's definitely a mix of kind of like the pop punk stuff that I've been exploring, but then there's also a lot more, um, my song, I Fucking Love You, I think is a good example of just like the really like, just like good vibes, pop music, like, you know, put your windows down listen to it in the sunshine, like that kind of energy. And I think the the themes of the EP, like there's something for everybody because it deals with like falling out of love and then also falling back into love. So there's, there's a little bit of everything. Speaking of yeah. falling in and out of love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite topic. Yeah. Honestly. Um, what's it like, you know, being Zolita dating? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I can only imagine it's like, <laughs> You probably have a gazillion options and then it's like, oh man, gotta choose one or maybe you don't. I don't know, what, what's it like, what's going on? 
<laughs> so I have a girlfriend who is so perfect and wonderful and I love her. Um, but I, for the longest time, like for years, I was like serial, just like dater. Like oh, man. dated so many people. I know and LA does that to you. Why is that? Yeah. I don't even know if it's LA. I think I was just like, I was in a place where I'm like, I don't want to be, I, I can't, don't have time. Like, mm -hmm. Don't want to be serious with up. anybody, mm -hmm. and I'm not ready for that. And I had yeah, gotten out of a bad breakup too, and so I was just, you know, what? I'm gonna like just meet people and like, you know, I love, I love dating, but I'm also a Libra and I love talking. So <laughs> it was just fun to go. I loved like meeting, even if I was like, okay, even after ten minutes, I'm like, I'm not that interested in you romantically. I'm like, let's have a great conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like especially in the lesbian community, like you can meet like so many of my friends are people that I used to go on dates with. Okay, so when's the EP come out? The EP comes out in February. February. And I'm going to go on tour. I'm um, so excited. Tour? Yeah. I forgot to... Yeah. What's the situation? <laughs> so I'm touring in February, and it's a small, small tour, but it's the my first headline tour, so I'm Let's so excited. Let's go! Yeah. Does that feel so more great. like... Is it like, what are the emotions for like a first headline tour? I can't even imagine. Oh my god. I'm just really excited that everybody in the audience is going to be like probably like, you know, like major fans, like people you. that have They're come for, come for yeah. me and that mm -hmm. have known my music. It's so fun to meet people who have known me and who have like stuck along the ride with me, like Grown since, yes. you know, since the beginning. So that's so exciting. That's yeah. so cool. Is that starting winter? Um, it's going to be in February. February. Yeah. When the EP comes out. Let's go. Yes. And the, do we have an EP title yet? Yes, but oh, it's a top secret info. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You'll it'll you'll kind of know once I announce the tour, people will kind of figure out what the EP title is. But <laughs> well, thank you so yes. much. Yes, thank you so much this was for so sharing great. your story. Yes. Super inspirational. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This was so and fun. Hell yeah. yeah! You just watched uh, the Demi Ramos show. This is uh, superstar Zolita, and um, see you next time.